Welcome back you guys, I am Nini FC. This is Blue Line CV and yes, I know what you're thinking. This is exactly how my hair's been looking like underneath my hoodie. Unfortunately, the hoodies are in the washing machine right now. So I gotta go just like <laughs> fully natural for the videos today. Honestly, you guys, I miss my barber. Like once this whole self isolation period just finishes, the first thing I'm gonna do when I see him is just give him a big hug because real talk, like, <laughs> it makes you realize how many things you take for granted and you don't appreciate. You know what I mean? Like, ah, oh, it's been a long time since I've seen me with a skin fade, you guys. I'm starting to struggle a bit, but I'm just yapping on too much, you guys. You know what you're here for, another News Daily video. And in today's News Daily video, I'm gonna be speaking about three stories today. They're gonna be on the latest surrounding Alex Tellers. I'll be talking about Arturo Martinez and I'll be speaking about Philip Coutinho. So this is gonna be another interesting video. And before I actually start with the video, one more quick thing, you guys. If you like today's video, then smash that like button. Help me get over 1,000 likes for today's video. And now we start with the first story for the day. And I wanna talk about the latest reports surrounding Alex Sellers because there has been actually new developments in this story. Now, the news is Alex Sellers has replaced his agent. Now, his agent was actually his sister. The agent that we have been referring to before has been his representative. Reps and agents are two different things. And Alex Sellers has enlisted Pini Sahavi as his new agent. So this is a really big story because Pini Sahavi has had a long-term history with this club. He was the guy the main guy that helped Roman buy Chelsea back in 2003 and since then he has worked with the club over the years you know he's helped introduce players alongside guys like Kia Jubakarian and through them we've signed lots of Brazilian players like your Luizes, your Williams etc etc so for Alex Sellers to win this Pini Zahavi that means that he's serious about leaving Porto and he's serious about signing for us and if you're asking me, this is a very smart move to make. Alex Sellers knows that we're in the market for a new left back. We've got options. There's a lot of left back options around the same price as him. So we don't necessarily have to go in for him. So if you're Alex Sellers and you want to boost your chances of getting that big move you want, then you have to turn to the big boys to help you sell out a deal. We continue on you guys and there was some more information in this article. We got some more context in regards to why Tellers actually rejected to stay at Porto and that's because the contract offer that he did want, Porto couldn't fulfill. Tellers only wanted 6 million euros per season. Now that's a lot of money for a Portuguese team but for a club like us that's not too much and immediately Alex Tellers' wage packet would cost less than Marcus Alonso. Now, Marcus is on like 150k per week. I think that adds up to be like, what, 7.5, 8 mil per season. So for him to get 6 million euros, which is like 5 mil per season, you know, his wage pack is a lot more affordable. It seems like Tellez really could be that next signing we do make because FC Porto are in the market for replacement left backs. They have been looking at Hetafe's Marco Carella, and that's a player that I spoke about in a previous video. So if he was to sign for Porto, that allows Tellez to leave freely and if you're asking me i have a feeling that this is how this deal will play out i think that porto will sign cucurella we will sign tellers and i can see that whole synergy working like this now you guys know that i prefer to sign tagliafico i think his defensive work is better than tellers is and i think as an overall player there's a lot that we can work with if you have like young wingers in front of you, I think they love to have like an experienced defensive player that they can rely upon behind them. And if you're asking me, I think that maybe Tellers may need like an adjustment period to get used to the pace and tempo of the Premier League because playing against Premier League wingers is completely different than playing against wingers from the Portuguese league. That's my only point of reservation. You know, we cannot forget that Alex Tellez is excellent in the offensive phase. You know, his dead balls, his free kicks, his crosses inside the box. That's really going to add another dimension to how we break teams down and how we attack. And, you know, with a team like us, you guys, from next season, most times we're going to play against teams parking the bus. So from that sense, how often will Tellez be tested? Because ideally from the tactics, we're going to have the midfield player or the wide defenders helping support our left back anyway. So I think things will still work out. My thing is though, is he going to take penalties when he comes here? I don't think so. But the positive is, if we ever play games where it comes down to a penalty shootout, 
you know, let's say we keep Jorginho. We've got guys like um, Teles as well. We've got some excellent penalty takers. So this could give us an extra dimension for knockout games. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to ask you, how do you find Alex Teles? Is he the left back that you guys want to see? If not, tell me the left back you think would be the best option to sign. Let me know in the comments below. And now we move on to the second story for the day. And it's time to talk about the latest surrounding Arturo Martinez from Inter Milan. Now, from what I'm gauging from the fan base, it seems like everyone wants us to sign a striker as the main position of importance. Could Lautaro Martinez be that replacement to Jadon Sancho? You know, both players around the same ballpark when it comes to buying them. We need a winger and a striker. Maybe the club might feel that they can't get both. So it's best to hedge our bets on one player from one key position. According to Sport, Barcelona have been worried about our pursuit for Lautaro Martinez. They still feel confident that they can sign the player. However, they are taking our interest very seriously. Now, reports are quite interesting. They're actually saying that we have presented an offer to Inter Milan and to the player himself. If you guys have forgotten, the key piece of information surrounding this Martinez deal is that from between July 1st and July 15th, that is the only time in which his release clause can be activated and if the club signs him during this period you can sign him for his release clause which is around 111 million euros once that period's over inter milan can ask for any fee they want and you just know that they're going to take the piss completely ask for like 150 or 200 mil because of course they want to keep one of their prize assets and strengthen themselves so from that point of view it does make a lot of sense reports get sexier they're saying that we've presented the player a 10 million euro per season contract and we've said, we've told Inter Milan that we would be happy to spend the full 111 million euros to release Martinez from his contract. So that's the story, you guys. I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions on this. A part of me still feels like is spending so much on a striker our best use of funds. Now, the reason why I say this, you guys, is because I look at the system, I look at the tactics. I'm looking at how Lampard is trying to improve things and how he wants us to go on to the next level. And for us to do that, I feel like our wide play needs to have more quality and be more efficient. I think we need to create more opportunities for our strikers and, you know, signing key positions like a left back and a top quality winger could be the difference we need to actually bridge that gap and improve and go another level. You know, if you're signing Martinez, even though he's an exceptional world-class striker, I'm going to say he's world-class because I've been speaking about this guy for so many years in this channel. Back when he was playing in Argentina, I was telling all you guys in streams and in videos, this guy is guaranteed to cost over 100 million in the not too distant future. It seems that future is coming closer. And I'm wondering, can we actually sign the player? The reality is if you're spending so much money to sign him, this does bring up huge question marks in regards to Tammy Abraham because currently he wants a new contract. He's playing things very slow because he already has so many years left in his deal. He's in no rush and he wants to see how things progress and wait for this season to end first before negotiations continue and both parties reach an agreement. If he's seen at the club want to spend this type of money to sign a player in this position, how is Tammy going to react to that? Now, yes, I understand the competition is great. But I'm just thinking how many clubs have benefited over the years and having two top quality strikers around the same level, around the same wages and really profited from that because I don't see us using a two striker system. And, and most importantly, I feel like Martinez does best working alongside a striker. It was the same thing back in Argentina, the same thing at Inter Milan. Could this point to the fact that maybe, maybe we might be seeing Tammy and Lazaro together? Who knows? You know, I admit that I'm not going to know every single thing. I'm just making educated guesses. You know, if you actually break down Martinez's game, maybe he does have the capability to play up front by himself because if he plays for us, he's going to have options between the lines because that's how Lampard likes us to play. That's how we've seen Tammy Abraham play as well. And, you know, Martinez is a very adept striker. He can do a lot of things. And one thing I really like about him is how he uses his body, how he holds the ball up and how he plays people in. I think Martinez is on another level to Luka Jovic and maybe the club may feel it's best to have two top quality young strikers competing for a first team spot because in the long term for us, we are going to get that number one player that wins that battle and we're going to benefit from that. And I guess maybe the only club that we can attest to that have really done the same thing was Real Madrid. 
You know, at Real Madrid, they had Iguain and Benzema, two strikers on the same age. Yeah, they got a lot of goals together, but maybe Benzema was the one to win that battle in the end. And look at how good of a player Benzema's become through that entire process. So maybe that's how we have to see the situation. I'm not too sure, you guys. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this because you guys have some amazing insight. It's always fascinating to read. And you guys, before I end things, we now move on to the final story for the day. And I want to talk about these Philip Coutinho links. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, I do not like talking about Philip Coutinho. I have to because this was the news for the day and it's only right that you guys hear the full lowdown. Basically, it's us and Leicester City vying to sign the player on loan. You know, Leicester City under Brendan Rodgers, you know, Brendan Rodgers worked under Coutinho when both were at Liverpool. So, Leicester are seeing it like this. They're most likely going to secure Champions League football for next season. They want quality. Coutinho could be that quality that they need. Maybe he'd cost too much immediately, but if you can sign him on loan for 30 million, for a club like Leicester that are going to have a big cash injection, that could be quite a favourable deal for them. The reason why I don't really like these Coutinho stories is because I think they made a lot more sense that season when Hazard was thinking about leaving. Of course, he left. He's at Real Madrid. And it made sense because, okay, when Hazard left, logically, if Coutinho was going to be your short-term quality replacement to just help our next season, you know, once Hazard left, then yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But now, I just don't think we need to sign any loan players. It only makes sense to sign Coutinho on loan if he really is a last resort option. He's a quality player, but I feel like to get the best out of him, you have to change how you play. For a guy like Coutinho, his pressing on the ball isn't as good as it should be for the modern day football demands. It's as simple as that. It's why Liverpool have done much better without him. It's why he struggled at Barcelona as well because he wasn't good in the defensive phase. And at Bayern Munich, they're seeing that Müller is a much better player for this system compared to Coutinho. For a guy like Coutinho, you have to change how the team's tactics are. And I'm just thinking, is he really worth doing that? I mean, really? I don't think so. He is a great player, but as I keep stressing all the time, you know, football isn't football manager. You know, it's not FIFA. You can't just make a team of really good individual players and expect them to play together because when you do that, you have situations like Man United, situations like AC Milan and situations like Arsenal. So you guys, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. You guys, I've released a lot of videos. I suggest you watch my five replacements for Jaden Sancho. I love to read your thoughts and opinions on that. But anyway, I'm going to keep it moving. Thank you for watching. I'm Mimi FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys later for some more videos.